We are now going to cover a few simple code that is that accompanies homework 7. This simple code is clearly demarcated between the begin simple code and the end of simple code. And you can safely even remove it if it's confusing you. But I wanted to leave it in your homework assignment so that you can walk through it and you know you don't have to go through the website to kind of search for it. This way it's all uh, included in the same file. You can go back to it, understand how the, the various examples work, and hopefully figure out how to complete the rest of the exer exercises by um, stepping through the various proofs that are included. So the various proofs that I have, I'm going to try, I'm going to now, the rest of the video is just going to be me explaining how to do the actual proofs. Uh, and there are four of them. The last one is quite big. You're not going to be asked to do something this this long. Um, but I include it for the sake of completeness and also because it's a nice result. So the first result, in the first result we are showing that the program that rejects all inputs recognizes the language void. So as you may still remember, the language void is one where all inputs um, for all inputs, you have false, which means you cannot prove this, right? So you cannot prove elements of false. False is an empty value. Uh, therefore, um, therefore, this language would reject all inputs. So if it does reject all inputs, the program that just rejects all inputs should recognize it. And that is, in fact, what we're trying to prove here. So how do we prove that? As I mentioned in the previous slide, whenever we have p recognizes, you have to use the constructor p recognizes def. And that's what we do. So we apply it by show, by prove, whenever we want to prove that a language um, recognizes, sorry, a program recognizes a language, we simply have to take care of the two uh, cases. So let's do the first one. We have implications in the goal, so what do we do? We do intros. So this is saying that if I run my program, which is reject, and that program accepts the input, then I can prove false. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense, right? Because reject must return reject, not accept. So what that means is that I have um, I have a contradiction in my assumption, h, and I can get rid of it by doing inversion of h. I can also get rid of it by using this special tactic that I, I think you will lo love, is run simple all. And what run simple all does is it simplifies all thing, all assumptions that are related to run. Okay, so it's going to try to simplify it as much as possible. And when it doesn't know what to do with it, it just lets you do the, the rest of the job. And what it doesn't know how to handle is sequence. So you cannot handle sequences, but everything else it can. And in fact, if you just run run simple all, it will even conclude obvious cases such as these. Okay, so that takes care of it. Now we have again the, the next goal that we need to prove. Uh, and in the next goal, we have implication in the goal. So we do intros. Now we have an assumption that has false. And as we know, this is again a contradiction. How do we prove this contradiction? We do contradiction. And, and that takes care of it. Another thing we can do is we can do inversion of age and with the explosion principle, uh, we will get rid of it. Similarly, we could also do run simple all. Run simple all also takes care of contradiction free. So here you go. And this is how we show, and this is how we show that the program that rejects all inputs uh, recognizes the language false. Great, so now, we should be able to prove that a language, the language void, right, is recognizable. And of course it is. Let's see, how do we prove that something is recognizable? Recognizable, we use p recognizable def. Okay, so that's what we do. We apply p recognizable def. And if you just do apply recognizable def, it says that it doesn't know what program recognizes the language, right? So we need to provide it. We need to provide which program recognizes the given language, the language in the goal, right? We know 
that it has to be this program, right? The program here. So that's what we write. And now we just need to prove that the program reject recognizes the language false or void. And we do that by using the theorem we just proved. Okay. So in the next video, in the next video, no, in this video, now I want to prove that the language false is also decidable. It's not just recognizable, but it is also decidable. Let's go back to our slide. If we want to show that something is decidable, we use p decidable f, p decidable def, right? Which so now we need to provide which program decides this language. Well, it has to be the same that recognizes it, so it's reject. Okay, and now if we have p decides, p decides, we need to use the constructor p decides, right? A program decides a language, so we need to show that. Okay, and if you remember how we what is p deciding we need to show that p recognizes and p is a decider so first thing to show that the program reject is recognizes the language void we already did that in the first exercise so it concluded very easily next we need to show that the program reject is a decider okay so if it's a p decider we have to use the constructor p decided f and that's what we do here Okay, now we have an implication in the goal. We simplified with intros. And now we have p halts reject. Okay, and now what do I advise? I advise you to do a search and we'll show you this. And notice that halts, that the reject halts. Right? The program reject halts, so we can use that constructor. And finally, we need to show that uh, reject when I run it, I get a reject, and that is true by the constructor run ret that we just covered. So we apply that and we conclude our proof. Okay. So in then our, our next video, I'm going to cover this longer exercise, which is to show that two language, if two languages are decidable, then the conjunction of both languages is also decidable.